Welcome back to another Madden 20 video. Hi for you guys here today. Today it's going to be another fantasy style rebuild, this time of the Detroit Lions. But before I get too deep into this video, if you guys are new around here and end up enjoying this one, feel free to subscribe. It would be awesome if you can come back for my next upload. Also, if you'd like to follow me on Twitter or join my Discord, links to those are down below. But now let's get into this team. It's a 75 offense, 81 defense, 75 overall. Matthew Stafford leads this offense at quarterback, 31 years old, 79 overall with star dev. The development is kind of irrelevant at this point because he's really not going to progress at all. He will likely regress after this season pretty badly. I may keep him on the team for one season, but I will 100% not bring him back. Hold on, when is his contract over? I know he has a really big contract. He's very expensive. He still has four years remaining on this contract. Oh my god, I think I have to trade him. I mean, we're gonna take a pretty big hit most likely, but still, I mean, I don't, I can't afford to pay him that much money over these next four years. I'm trading Matthew Stafford. I'm sorry, Lions fans, if you didn't want me to trade Matthew Stafford. I just, I hope you understand that in Madden, he's really not going anywhere. He's getting up there in age, of course. He's not the highest overall. He's going to be really bad after a couple of seasons. I just, I just think it's a lot better. Uh, it's, in, it's in the best interest of the team to trade him before this season begins. Carryon Johnson, though, is the starting running back. Carryon Johnson is a stud. I think he's going to be a great running back one day. He's already very good. Seldom does he go down to the first contact, at least, you know, during the Eagles-Lions game. He didn't get many yards, or he didn't have many yards per carry, but it, feel, it felt like every time he got the football, he broke, like, two tackles, and then he'd go down. Their offensive line just didn't block well for him. The Eagles always gave him really bad fronts to run against. I don't know what the play calling there was from the Lions. But, yeah, Carrion Johnson is a stud. I want to keep him on the team as long as I can. J.D. McKissick on this team. Paul Perkins has looked like his picture is in, like, I don't know, 480p, probably even less than that. And then, I don't know who this is. Ty Johnson. All right, rookie out of Maryland. Marvin Jones, Kenny Galladay, Danny Amendola. Make for one of the better wide receiver cores in the NFL, if you ask me. Kenny Galladay is a beast. I love me some Kenny Galladay. Six foot four, two years of experience. He is a stud wide receiver on this team. I'm going to have him be the number one. Marvin Jones is not bad whatsoever. He's definitely a good wide receiver. He's just getting up there in age as well. I may keep him for one season and then trade him after. Maybe I'll even trade him this year. I don't know. It depends on if I can trade for another wide receiver or not. And then Danny Amendola is 33 years old. He definitely has some value now, so I'm going to try to get rid of him if I can. This offensive line has a couple different young players on it, so it's not horrible. You know, Taylor Decker is not a bad left tackle. 75 overall, 25 years old. Frank Ragnow is a player I try to trade for frequently. I think I've gotten him a couple times, but a little bit harder to trade for than some of these other centers, but he's still very good. And then Graham Glasgow is also pretty young. He's 27, and I think Rick Wagner is like 30, if I had to take a guess. He's actually 29, and I don't know who you are. Kenny Wiggins. That's a great name, by the way. TJ Hawkinson, <laughs> um, arguably the best tight end in this last draft, was the first tight end selected. But there were two out of Iowa selected in the first round. He just went first. 82 speed, 80, 84 catching, almost at 87 because I saw his acceleration down there. 87 acceleration, 64 run blocking, 79 catching traffic. He's a great tight end. That shouldn't be an issue for us this entire time. They also have Jesse James, who isn't too bad. He's 25 years old. I feel like he's a better blocking tight end than Hawkinson. Now he's not. 59 run blocking. I knew Hawkinson wasn't bad at it, but I thought Jesse James was a tad bit better, but I guess I am entirely wrong. Or maybe his stats just aren't accurate. I don't know. Defensively, we got two superstars down here, which is pretty cool. Darius Slay, Damon Harrison. Of course, Damon Harrison, arguably the best nose tackle in the NFL. One of the better nose tackles, I'll, I'll just say that. Easily one of the better nose tackles in the NFL. Darius Slay is very good. He's a top corner in the NFL as well. But he doesn't really have too much help around him, to be honest. Justin Coleman isn't horrible. I'm pretty sure they paid a good bit of money for him. He's a good slot corner. I can keep him in that department. Rashawn Melvin, I think I'm going to trade. He's getting up there in age. He's 29. Mike Ford, I don't think is anything too special. He only has one year of experience, though, so he definitely has a lot of room to develop. But Amani Orarie is a player I want to get involved for a few reasons. Number one, he's a rookie. Number two, he went to Penn State. And number three, he's actually very good. So I want him getting involved in this team He's six foot two, you know, he's a he's good size for a cornerback, okay speed for his size, you know, 89 speed isn't too bad, decent agility, good acceleration, you know, not the best coverage skills, but can press pretty well. I think I'm going to have him play the number two, and then Justin Coleman will be the slot. Hopefully, Orarie can develop a little bit, that would be pretty cool. And then Tracy Walker is the starting free safety, only 24 years old, he's not too bad there. Quandre Diggs, hook him, hook him horns out of Texas, 26 years old for him. 
Hopefully he can be pretty good for us. I also have Tavon Wilson, who I will likely trade because I doubt he's going to get much playing time. Christian Jones, I guess, is the right outside linebacker. I don't know what I want to do with this defense the more I think about it. Devon Kennard is the other outside linebacker. Jelani Tavai, they just drafted this year. He's a 73. I didn't think he'd be that high of an overall, to be honest. Wasn't He was a second-round draft pick, correct? Um, Not really much of a pass rusher. That's for sure. He's more of a 4-3 outside linebacker. I think I want to switch this defense to a 4-3, though. My thought process is that Trey Flowers can definitely rush off the edge. He can also play in a 3-4 if he needs to, but 77 speed is good enough to rush off the edge for me. And then Deshaun Hand, I know he's kind of more of an interior guy as well, but he could probably also rush off the edge. 78 speed, 92 strength. He can play very well, at, honestly, at, at any defensive line position, but I think I want him rushing off the edge, and then Mike Daniels can probably be defensive tackle. But the thing is, like, they have Ashawn Robinson, too, who's only 24. I need to get Ashawn Robinson more involved. So this may mean I have to trade Mike Daniels. I don't know if I want to do that, though. Mike Daniels, he's just like a funny dude. You know, if you ever watch the NFL Top 100, he has the best comments. He's also very good, so I don't know what I want to do with Mike Daniels. He's 30 years old, though. Since this is fantasy style, I think I may trade him, but in the realistic rebuilds, I'll probably keep him a little bit more. I don't know. But uh, Trey Flowers, Damon Harris, and Deshaun Hand are definitely staying, but this team definitely has the personnel to run a 4-3. It seems like they have like a hybrid, I don't know, just based on who they have. What is their defense all about? It is a hybrid, 3-4 and a 4-3. I just like sticking to either a 3-4 or either a 4-3 in rebuild. So I'm going to go with the Browns. Somebody asked me what playbooks I usually use. I'll show this off again. I like showing it every once in a while. So the Browns defense usually plays pretty well for me. And then the, I like how I just said I like to stick to a 4-3 or a 3-4. This one has a 4-4 package. It's not that big of a deal. But then on offense, I usually like going with the Saints playbook. Let's do that, and then I'll set the schemes up now. Turns out Carrion Johnson's actually considered a power back. 86 trucking. I didn't think he can truck that well. That's actually quite dope. He's a really fun player. Looks like he'd be really fun to use in the game. But I will be changing the schemes here. I don't really think the schemes matter too much in this game. It's more so just, you know, to get extra experience for those who fit the scheme. I don't think it actually affects how the team plays. The playbook is way more impactful. But, you know, the schemes, maybe they make a difference. I don't exactly know. Like, somebody told me that 4-6 defense is bad, but... I really don't think the defensive schemes or offensive schemes really make a difference. Honestly, it's a 100% scheme fit. I'm just going to go with that. They've also played well. I've had 4-6 defenses be top 5 like every year, so I honestly don't think it's that big of a deal. But now we can get into some trades one more time. This is not realistic. I just like, you know, uh, mentioning that again before I go into the trade. So it's not realistic at all. We can trade whoever we want, and I think I'm going to start with Matthew Stafford. Please don't kill me. Man, I don't, I don't dislike Matthew Stafford. I've always kind of liked him. I thought he's been all right. But, like, he's a $19 million cap hit, man. We can free that cap. We don't have to pay him the next couple seasons. We'll probably take some sort of penalty. I don't exactly know how all of these contracts work in real life. They're, I feel like they work a little bit differently in Madden because it's kind of it's way more complicated, I feel, in real life. But, like, I, I don't know because his bonus, I don't know if we still we probably still owe him that or something. I don't, I, like I mentioned, I don't know exactly how it works. But I know enough to do Madden rebuilds, I can tell you that much. But I'm trading Matthew Stafford. I apologize. Probably Rick Wagner as well. He's also sort of expensive. I'm giving Matthew Stafford and Rick Wagner to the Broncos for their first round draft pick. Absolutely killing their cap situation, but making mine look a lot better. We have about 62 million now. Jermaine Curse, Kenny Wiggins, and JD McKissick are heading to the Redskins in exchange for their first rounder. All right, one more first rounder is now with us. Christian Jones, Devon Kennard, Graham Glasgow gets me the Dolphins. Now I'm gonna try to trade for a couple players. I'm not sure if I'll trade for another first rounder because right now we have four. That should be good enough for this first season, so hopefully we can at least land a couple different players you know, to fill in some of these holes for this uh, first season. Mike Daniels and Rashawn Melvin are going to the Buccaneers here for Ali Marpet. Tavon Wilson Sr. and a third round draft pick will land me Zach Martin. So the overall of the team right now doesn't look too bad, right? The 77, 81 offense, 79 defense. We actually made the team better technically, but I really think we got worse because... Jeff Driscoll is our starting quarterback, so that can't really be that good. Yo, should I start David Blau? He's a rookie out of Purdue. We're doing it, man. We have a 48 overall quarterback starting for us here at one. Could you imagine the storylines if he wins rookie of the year and wins MVP? That would be ridiculous. Also, I'm going to move uh, this other rookie, Bo, is it? Or how do you pronounce this? Ben Schovel? Ben Schovel? I don't know. Sounds, is that German? Doesn't W usually make a V sound? I, I have no idea, man. We're going to call him good old Bo. I've drafted him a couple times in the past when I did realistic rebuilds last year. He's just going to play right tackle. He's probably going to be bad. 
but it's not that big of a deal, to be honest. He's going to be a 58 overall. Oh my, is it even worth it? Probably not. All right, Crosby's going to start. How old are you? Only one year of experience. Yeah, okay. I don't really I don't really trust Bo that much. So Crosby will be the starting right tackle. We can easily address that in the draft. But the rest of the offensive line is fully complete, honestly. Um, you know, we have one wide receiver who's going to be here this entire time in Kenny Galladay. And then Marvin Jones, Danny Amendola. I just decided to keep him. It's not that big of a deal. I'll, I'll hold on to him for one more season. Do they have any rookie wide receivers? Who are you? I don't actually know. Marvin Hall. No, two years of experience. I don't know who this is. He is a rookie out of Old Dominion. Okay, I mean, he's a 66. I don't really think he's going to progress. We're just going to keep the guys we have. Maybe we can draft the wide receiver. And then defensively, yeah, we're in a 4-3, right? I probably will reconsider this next year because if this doesn't end up working out, like let's just say Deshaun Hand and Trey Flowers seem to be struggling because technically, like I said before, they are 3-4 defensive ends. But I feel like they're good enough in the game where they can move around a little bit. I don't know. We're going to try it out for one season. If it doesn't work out, I'm not opposed to switching back. And then if I do switch back, then Deshaun Hand can just be the left end, you know, Trey Flowers right end, David Harrison nose tackle. It'll be fine. We'll, we'll make it work. Cornerbanks are exactly how I said they would be. And then Tracy Walker's the free safety, Quandre Diggs strong safety. And then I signed Brandon Marshall. I didn't mention this. I signed him in free agency. I just wanted to, you know, a, a right outside linebacker I can just plug into the lineup for this year. And he's still pretty solid. I will take it. And then specialist, if anybody cares. The reason why I mentioned that whole thing with the defensive line is because Deshaun Hand's a 69 overall rush left end, which is not very good, but maybe he can still perform well. Overall, doesn't usually matter all that much, to be honest. I've, I've seen players really low go off. You know, look at Jacoby Brissett. He's like a 72, and he wins MVP all the time. So I'm not really too worried about it. We're going to just simulate here and see how the team plays. Yeah, so somehow this team is 3-3-1. Three, three, and one. Oh, If we tied to the Cardinals, I'm going to lose my mind. <laughs> but the Raiders are 0-7. and seven. We are in second place. The Vikings are 3-4-1, and one. that's probably who we tied to, and the Bears are 3-4, and four. the Packers 6-2, and two. I think I just said that though. They're playing very well, as they are in real life, of course. This is actually on Thursday, before the Eagles-Packers game. I'm, I'm really hoping the, the Packers lose, but, you know, I don't know. They're probably, they're probably gonna win. We'll see what happens. But anyway, TJ Hawkinson actually has Superstar. I did not know that. I kinda figured they would've just given him Star, but I will 100% take Superstar, that's quite awesome. And then defensively, do we have a lot going around? Not really. Jelani Tavai has two. Amani Orarie also has two. Not too bad, I guess. Now, who has to come back to the team? Danny Amendola is a top free agent. That's actually a really good sign because there's probably nobody who's that good. Ashawn Robinson, I do want, though. Sam Martin, I should probably bring back. He's a good punter. Logan Thomas. Wasn't Logan Thomas a quarterback or something in college? At least a little bit. Or am I thinking of someone else? Whatever. I don't know. But Ashawn Robinson and Sam Martin will be coming back to the team. Also, I don't know how this happened, but you just see there, the overall is a 74. I didn't do anything different. It just went down. I, I don't know what happened. I mean, I switched that bow got a right tackle and the overall went down to a 74. So I don't know exactly what happened there, but I guess we didn't make the team better. We are not in the playoffs. Really did not expect to make it this year, though. How was the team 5-10-1? Okay, so the Vikings are also 5-10-1. The Bears 11-5, the Packers 10-6. I'll take that. That's probably a top 10 draft pick. I'm actually certain it's a top 10 draft pick. David Blau wasn't as bad as I thought he was going to be, man. He's in the 40s for his overall. Could have been way worse. Definitely could have been way worse. Carry on Johnson wasn't tremendous, but wasn't horrible, I guess. 3.9 yards per carry, almost four. Kenny Galladay was very good. Marvin Jones, not too bad. TJ Hawkinson doesn't do too much. Danny Amendola gets six touchdowns. I guess that's not too bad. A lot of sacks lit up from Taylor Decker. Okay, that's actually probably why the overall went down then, because it thinks that Bo guy is starting at right tackle. Because Tyrell Crosby is considered a left tackle, apparently. Whatever. Gerard Davis, 113 tackles, leads the team. Jelani Tavai, 104. 21 tackles for loss for Damon Harrison. My god. Deshaun Hand, 15. Trey Flowers, 14. Eight and a half sacks for Jelani Tavai. Huh? How did he get so many sacks? Was he pass rushing or something? Trey Flowers also gets eight. Three interceptions from Tracy Walker, two from Darius Slay, one from Jelani Tavai, Gerard Davis, Justin Coleman, and Amani Orarie. I feel like Tavai has to win Defensive Rookie of the Year. That is a great season. Unless Devin White wins it or something. Tracy Walker does not get a touchdown. I don't know why. I, I saw his name. I figured he may have gotten one because I sorted it by that. Whatever. Also, no safeties by the team. One blocked kick, though, Deshaun Hand. And at least one forced fumble. We actually have four. Quandre Diggs forces two. Jelani Tavai one. Damon Harrison one. And three of those were recovered. Okay, so 27th on offense with probably the worst starting quarterback in the NFL. So that's pretty good, I guess. 13th on defense. I'm telling you, 4-6 defense isn't that big of a deal. Jacoby Brissett, MVP. Yeah, okay. Anybody from the Lions? No, I don't see anyone. 
just want to make sure. I have the most updated roster, correct? Yeah, Patrick Mahomes is a 99. Good to know. I guess it wouldn't have. That doesn't really show anything. He could have just went up to a 99, I guess. Zeke, though, Offensive Player of the Year. Nobody from the Lions. Defensive Player of the Year, Khalil Mack. But Jelani Tavai at number three. All right, let's go. That's awesome. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Kyler Murray. David Blau at number two. TJ Hawkinson at number six. Defensive Rookie of the Year does get a Tavai. Let's go. Amani Orari at number five. I will take it. That's not bad whatsoever. Hopefully, Tavai goes up in dev then. That would be phenomenal. In rather surprising fashion, the 49ers and the Texans are in it. That's just, you know, commenting on Madden simulation. I feel like the 49ers don't usually make it too far into the postseason. But here we go. Who's going to win? The Texans win. Texans win 38-17. to But now let's check out experience points and development traits. David Blau has five experience points. Oh, that's great. TJ Hawkinson, though, has four, so he should go up quite well. Defensively, Jelani Tavai has eight, and he also has star development now. Damon Harrison's an X-Factor. Trey Flowers went up to Superstar. A lot of stuff happened. Amani Orarie also has four. I want him I want him to develop so badly. Gerard Davis has three. A couple other guys have two. Okay, the defense. Actually developing really well right now. I'm excited for it. Let's advance into the offseason for this first season, and let's see who we can sign. Nobody. We have $4 million in cap room. Okay, Antonio Brown is here. That's cool to know. Chris Harris Jr. is also here. He would have been a cool acquisition. I could still go after him, technically. He could be a he could be our slot corner instead of Justin Coleman. Honestly, honest, I'm doing this, right? I'm gonna give him nothing. If he comes to the team for nothing, I don't know, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be really happy. <laughs> he could just definitely be a slot corner for us. I still want Oraria starting though. I wanna see if he can get into the 80s at some point. But yeah, we have no money. I'm sure a lot of this has to do with uh, our draft capital and stuff like that. But again, I don't really think I would have went after too many people right now, so it's not that big of a deal, to be honest. Justin Simmons went up to Superstar. He actually would have been a cool player to go after. Right, it's not that big of a deal that we can't get anybody. Honestly, I'm not too upset about it. We have three draft picks here very early, and then our last one is number 11, so that's not even late. So, who do we want, right? Let me run down the draft board here. The player I want probably the most is this one defensive end over here. This guy, Kirkland Ferris, looks like he's going to be very good. I think if I draft him, he may slide up to outside linebacker, and then we might actually switch to a 3-4. That could be a pretty good idea. Or I can draft this guy, play him over Deshaun Hand, and then have Deshaun Hand be defensive tackle. We'll work something out. I don't exactly know what I want to do yet. I mean, Ashawn Robinson isn't bad, but I don't know. I, I actually don't exactly know what I want to do. We also have this potential edge rusher over here, Ross Seymour, who looks pretty good. And we also have this middle linebacker who is probably going, I'm guessing, to the Raiders, to be honest. If he's actually available, I think I'm going to go with that guy. We'll figure it out. We'll definitely figure it out. But there's some nice looking cornerbacks as well. Rashawn Newton, 437 speed. But to be completely honest, this guy looks a little bit better. Because he's just a better combine overall. 448 speed isn't the best, but he tests very well in everything else. This cornerback class as a whole, though, is actually pretty good. There's a second round projected guy supposed to go in the third round there. Um, there's this guy, B press, B zone, B minus awareness. Pretty good looking cornerback group. I don't think I'm going to trade up, though. I'm assuming the Raiders are going middle linebacker here. And they do. Connor Stewart, a 77 overall middle linebacker. Wow. And then the Buccaneers are going to go cornerback Rashawn Newton. All right, I kind of wanted that guy, but I think I want the other cornerback a little bit more. Okay, so then now, I think I'm going to go Kirkland Ferris. I think Kirkland Ferris is going to be very, very good. There's also Kirkland Hurd here. Got to go with the Kirkland Twins. I don't know, but anyway, Kirkland Ferris is on the team here. He's a 77 overall hidden development trait. Obviously a reach. We took him at number three, ranked number four. <laughs> um, I think this guy can easily slide up if we need him to. But I'm not exactly sure what I want to do with this defense just yet. So I could potentially use another outside linebacker. The issue is the only good-looking linebacker in a 4-3 defense is the dude who already went. And I actually don't know anything about that guy. I'm not blindly taking him. That's not going to happen. So I don't know if I'm going to go linebacker here. I think I might go wide receiver. Kirkland Hurd, I think, is going to be really good. And he's going to add to our wide receiver group very well. The other issue with this draft class is the only decent quarterback is James Walter. And then I guess there's Jesse Kelly as well. I don't think he's going to be good though. But I think here we're going to go wide receiver. So whoever we have at quarterback gets a little bit more help. 
Kirkland Hurd. 76 overall hidden development trait. Obviously, another massive reach. Took him two picks earlier than he was supposed to go. This guy can be our slot wide receiver and probably our number two. That guy, I think, is going to go up in overall very well after this season. Now we're at a position where I'm going to take either a left tackle or a cornerback. I think I'm going to go left tackle. I think both of these guys are supposed to go late first round. Tobias Murphy, actually supposed to go mid first round. This guy's supposed to go late first round. Okay, I want Parker Carson and I want this corner. I'm going to go with the corner now, just in case he's not here with my next pick. This is a rough decision as well. I think Justin Coleman may have to be the fourth corner on this team then. But Tobias Murphy is a 76 overall hidden dev trait. He's going to be our new slot, I guess. I wasn't in like crazy need of cornerback, but it's always worth taking one. You know, you can you can usually get a pretty solid one in the draft and they can develop into a beast. And he's going to pair very well with Darius Slay. And hopefully now we can take this left tackle. If we can, this draft would have actually ended quite perfectly. The left tackle is still available. Darian Little also looks really good. But I'm going to go Parker Carson. He's a 78 overall normal. I was worried the other guy was going to have normal. That's why I didn't want to go with him. But this guy is still great. He has really poor run block power and run block finesse. But he can easily slide over to right tackle. And our offensive line is finally done. Okay, well, I guess I'm going to go quarterback. It may as well right now. Anybody else on my draft board, I guess? Let's see. We have this third round cornerback. We have Jesse Kelly. We have James Walter. I think James Walter is going to be better. And then we also have this right tackle who looks really nice. I'll probably take him at some point. But I guess James Walter. Welcome to the team. 72 with Hidden. Okay, that's good enough to start in my eyes, right? Far better than Blau. Has a lot of potential. He has at least star dev. Hopefully that's superstar or superstar X Factor. Actually has pretty solid stats. I will take that. That's not a bad draft pick at all. I'm not going to be able to get this right tackle. I didn't realize we didn't have a third rounder. It's because we traded it away for Zach Martin. But honestly, it's all right. I'd rather have Zach Martin on the team than uh, that right tackle. Unless he's available. If he is, I'll obviously take him. He is not. But let's just uh, we might as well check out who we would have gotten at quarterback if we missed out on that last guy. I'm very happy we took the last guy, Jesse Kelly. He can fly, though. That's one, one bright spot to him. All right, and then here in the fifth round, the most exciting pick of the entire draft, Martin Gabriel. 67 overall fullback out of Army. Let's go. 89 lead block, 77 strength. One of the more chiseled jaw lines I've ever seen. I'm, I'm very excited for this guy. This face scan had him looking like handsome Squidward there. But anyway, here we go. Draft recap. Kirkland Ferris was our first draft pick. We also got the other Kirkland, of course. Kirkland Ferris, Kirkland Hurd, the Kirkland Twins. I don't know, there's something going on there. There's some kind of uh, there's some kind of meme to be made there. I don't know what it is yet, though. Tobias Murphy is our third pick, and her was our third pick. Parker Carson rounds out our first round draft picks. And then, you know, the rest of the draft went as follows. So, did we miss on anybody in particular? I really wanted that one cornerback, but let's compare him to the corner we have. So, this guy's a 79 overall, 93 speed, 94 acceleration, hidden development trait. 80 man, 76 press, 72 zone, a very nice cornerback. I knew he was going to be good though, but I think we had other needs, honestly. He's a superstar. That kind of hurts. I would have really liked him. I just hope our guy's at least a superstar. That would be huge. Connor Stewart, I'm very interested in though. 77 overall. 83 speed is solid. 83 tackling is good. 89 acceleration. Good zone coverage as well. What is his development all about? The Raiders land themselves a star developing middle linebacker. Okay, nothing too exciting, but obviously still not bad. And now, who else was I close to taking that we can check out? Here's Darian Little, that other left tackle. He has hidden. Oh my god. That was so backwards. It's usually the other way around. Oh, this guy is so much better. I should have went with him, but... Usually when there's a really nice looking tackle later, they typically are like a high 70 with normal. I was just really hoping that the guy who was actually supposed to go in the first round had hidden. What is this guy's development, man? It's Star. Okay. Not too much better than the guy we have, but he's clearly the better option. The team's offense is actually better than the defense. That usually doesn't happen in my rebuilds. It's an 83 compared to a 79. A defense, 78 overall though. The team got better after the offseason for sure. We added a bunch of new faces, which is always cool to see. The quarterback is brand new. Forget your first name. James Walter out of Florida State. Six foot two, classified as a strong arm, even though he only has 89 throw power. My connection to the EA servers are lost. Okay, you've changed your active profile. All progress may be lost. I didn't do anything. All right. I'm pretty sure we're good. All of my changes should still be made. Hopefully, at least. That would be really unfortunate if they are not. 
like I was talking about, we have a new quarterback now, which is always awesome. We also have a new wide receiver, Kirkland Hurd. Pretty cool name to have, to be honest. Six foot one rookie wide receiver out of Wisconsin. Very nice stats, pretty well rounded. He needs to get that catching traffic up a little bit, but he should be a good compliment here to Kenny Galladay. Marvin Jones is certainly on his way out. Hopefully, we can get another wide receiver to fill that number three void at some point. Carson's going to be starting at left tackle. Taylor Decker didn't really play well there last season, so hopefully Carson can do better. TJ Hawkinson, of course, still the tight end. Defensively, I had to go out and sign another linebacker. I signed Mason Foster, moved him over to right where he goes up to a 75 overall. I just didn't want to have like a 58 overall player starting over here. I would just rather have Mason Foster. He won't play much, but it's just better than, you know, some random guy. Jelani Tavai, though, 81 overall for him. He had a fantastic rookie season coming off of a Defensive Rookie of the Year award, which is always cool. We have Kirkland Ferris now starting at left end. I decided to move Deshaun Hand to defensive tackle. He actually goes up to an 84, which is quite amazing. Trey Flowers is staying at right. He had a good season last year. He went up in development. I don't think I should change him. Murphy is going to be starting at the number two cornerback position and the slot. I was thinking about starting Imani Orarie a little bit more, but I don't know if I really want to. How old is Justin Coleman? He is actually 27. On the verge of regression, to be honest. I think I'm going to do it. Money Orarie will be the number three. Why not? I don't think he'll make too much of an impact, but we're just we're just going to throw him in there. Tracy Walker, Quandre Diggs are still the safeties. I need to replace those guys at some point because, I mean, they're, they're not bad. They're just not amazing. You know, I'd rather get, like, studs, like 93 pluses at, that, uh, at those safety positions. But for now, I will simulate, and I'll let you guys know what the team's all about here. In very common Madden fashion, we make the team better. Overall gets worse. Almost the polar opposite of the Falcons there, 6-2 for them. We are in last place. The Packers 5-3, the Vikings 2-5. You know, the offense is an 85, defense is a 79, and this team is, uh, you know, 2-5. But on the offense, the quarterback still does not have his dev revealed. Huh? 484 snaps. Alright, whatever. Hopefully it's a good development trait. Defensively. We have a star developing left end. We also have a star developing developing cornerback. Okay, so we didn't do too well on that side of the ball in the draft. But hopefully this quarterback makes up for it. Please be like a superstar or something. That would be that would be amazing. That would definitely make that draft worth it. Darius Slay needs to come back to the team. He's a player I can't afford to let go. Kenny Galladay I want. Matt Prater I should probably bring back. Taylor Decker is a player I want as well. So is Gerard Davis. Okay. All right, we're going to have to... We're going to have to do this. <laughs> Hopefully we can do this. Oh, we have a ton of money. We should be fine. I'm giving Darius Slay a two more or two more years, a two-year contract. He's coming back. I'll get Kenny Galladay, and then I'll get Taylor Decker near the end of the season. Very obviously, we did not make the playoffs. Uh, the team went 6-10, and ten, so I guess they did a little bit better than last year. All right. Well, this quarterback, 31 touchdowns compared to 10 picks. That's not too bad. Not too many yards, though. Maybe we should try a different playbook for this final year. Carry on Johnson was good. Four yards per carry, almost 1,100 yards, 11 touchdowns. Kirkland Hurd wasn't too bad. TJ Hawkinson, seven touchdowns. Kenny Galladay, six. Marvin Jones gets seven down there as well. Sack numbers are actually pretty low. Parker Carson played super well at left tackle. Taylor Decker, still struggling a little bit at right tackle, to be honest. 123 total tackles from Gerard Davis. 16 tackles for loss for Trey Flowers. 15 for Damon Harrison. But we have 10 for this rookie, Kirkland Ferris. I will take it. Two interceptions from Darius Slay, one from Gerard Davis, Jelani Tavai, Tracy Walker, and Tobias Murphy. Defensive touchdowns, we don't have any safeties. Same thing goes there. Blocked kicks, we have one, Darian Harvey. Forced fumbles, we have four, Gerard Davis, Jelani Tavai, Trey Flowers, and Mason Foster. All right, I didn't check how many of those were recovered. My bad. 26th on offense. I think that got worse. Eighth on defense. That actually got better. Okay, I guess the defense is, is doing its thing. Nobody from the Lions in the MVP running. NFC Offensive Player of the Year. Ryan Tannehill. Alright. <laughs> Defensive Player of the Year, Khalil Mack. Gerard Davis, though, at number 8. I'll take it. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to the quarterback. Kirkland Hurd at number 4. Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Kirkland Ferris. Tobias Murphy at number 4. Okay, at least we won both Rookie of the Year awards. Not too bad. Now we can check out, not yet actually, let me go to the Super Bowl and I'll show you guys these. The Browns and the Seahawks make it to Super Bowl 55. I feel like the, Se the Seahawks frequent the Super Bowl, honestly, in uh, in rebuilds. But 34 to 28 for the Browns. Now let's check out development traits and let's check out experience points. The quarterback has six experience points and he has star development. Hurd has three experience points, still was star dev as well. 
This guy, I feel like, should have went up in development. He played really well last year. Defensively, anybody go up? Jelani Tavai is up to a superstar. Okay, that's always cool to see. Amani Orarie only has two more. All right, Murphy has four, so he's at least going to be an 80. Ferris has six. Okay, he's going to be good as well. Oh, the defense is still coming along. The defense is not the issue with this team. I think I'm going to try to change the offensive playbook and try something else. I don't even know what offense to go with. This is going to be rough. Maybe this scheme actually does make a difference. That's such a good scheme fit, though. I don't want to switch from it. It's a 91%. All right, let's go to let's go to New England. Why not, right? Let's try New England's offense. Oh, I still have to negotiate with Taylor Decker. I forgot about that. Okay, so Taylor Decker. How much money do we have, man? Okay, we have a lot of money. We can get back Taylor Decker. He hasn't been great, but I'll still give him a contract, I guess. Gerard Davis I want back as well. He's not too expensive right now, and he's at least a solid middle linebacker for us. He's still very young as well. Matt Prater. I said I was going to bring him back, but he's regressing. I'll just sign another kicker. It's not that big of a deal. But let's see who is in free agency here to sign. Hopefully there's somebody huge. I would love to make this team a lot better instantly. $26.69 million. Keanu Neal, the top player. Definitely going after Keanu Neal. Um, I could use another wide receiver. I could actually use another outside linebacker as well. So maybe Zach Cunningham. Zach Cunningham can probably come play middle. Gerard Davis can probably slide out. I like the sound of that quite a bit. And I also need a wide receiver. So either I can draft one or I can just go after one of these guys down here. I'll figure something out, but I'll obviously let you guys know who I get. All right, we got Zach Cunningham and we got Keanu Neal. Okay, those guys are going to help out the defense a lot. I think, like I mentioned, I'm going to move Gerard Davis to a right outside linebacker, I want to say. That should help out this team a good bit. And then Zach Cunningham and Jelani Tavai will be, you know, the number one, number two sub linebacker. Tavai probably number one, Cunningham number two. But we'll make it work. I think this team, actually, it's right. I think this team is looking to have a very nice season this next year. I have no idea what draft pick we have, but it's probably a pretty solid one, and it is. We have pick number seven. Who's in this draft class? This is the first time looking at this draft board. This left end looks really nice. Dude, this cornerback, Kendall Cannon, is one of the best corners I have ever seen. I have no reason to take him, but man, is he really good looking. Okay, let me check out a couple more of these positions. And I'll let you guys know if anything sticks out. Oh my god. <laughs> Javier Bigby? Dude. These cornerback classes have actually been unreal so far. Even that guy, Donovan Knight, looks pretty good down there. Okay, let's simulate to our draft pick now. I think I have a pretty good idea who I want to select. If he's still available. Michael Jones just goes 78 overall left end. I think I want this free safety, Mark Preston. He can start over our current free safety, who I'm blanking on right now for some reason. I really can't remember his name. Oh, God, that's going to bother me. All right, well, I think I want this guy. Or Richard Calhoun. These guys are both probably really good, but I definitely want a free safety. 77, hidden development trait, ranked 5th, took him at number 7. Yeah, this guy's going to be a monster, and it's really pissing me off. I can't remember who our free safety is. Tracy Walker. Isn't it Tracy Walker? I just remembered, I think. Am I right? Okay, I am right. It is Tracy Walker. In the second round, what are the chances that cornerback is here? Very low. Okay, there's a nice looking outside linebacker, though. I'll take him, if anything. That cornerback is not here. That would have been nutty. But uh, I'll probably go with this guy, Dean Farrell. All right, anybody else better looking? 6.4 comp, 6.7 combine grade defensive tackle. Honestly, defensive tackles, you can kind of just go based off combine grade. But anyway, here we go. Let's go with this left outside linebacker, Dean Farrell. 72 overall, normal dev. Okay, supposed to go in the top 20. He's good depth, I guess. In the third round, anybody here still, he looks good. Walter Flynn apparently isn't good, even though his top three skills look very good. His wide receiver's better, apparently. He's not going to be good. I can tell you that much right now. I think I want this strong safety who skipped the combine. He's six foot four. Could you imagine if this dude just ran like a 4-3 or something stupid? That's the man we're going with. Lewis Rafferty. 69 overall, but he's 6'4 with 90 speed. Okay, that's actually really nice. 90 acceleration as well. That would be a fun player to use in a franchise. He'd be a fun project. Also went to Appalachian State. That's just cool. I don't know why I pointed that one out. So did Sam Martin, didn't he? Something like that. 
Any cornerbacks left? This cornerback class looked quite good, and I think there was a decent one around this area, and I just missed him. I'm going to go David Johnson. The star running back from the Cardinals is now a cornerback for the Lions. Okay, he's actually not too bad either. 75 zone, 92 speed. He'd make for a pretty decent safety as well. I also just got a glimpse of something when I was simulating. Somebody relocated. It was likely the Chargers. I don't know what team they relocated to, though. Maybe we can check that out here. But let's check out the draft recap. So we did pretty well in the first round. We got a 77 overall starting free safety, 72 overall backup outside linebacker. Another draft where we didn't get anybody below a 60. Any hidden dev traits on these guys down here? That would be pretty cool. Donald Burley. No, he doesn't. I had faith in him. What about this guy? Matthew Douglas. No, he is normal. Okay, but who relocated? And to what team? It's the Beats. The Beats relocated. Mike Verndon was their first draft pick. That's actually kind of bad. But... <laughs> Who was the first ranked player? It might have been that corner. Oh my god, these guys were both so good. I knew it, man. Kendall Cannon. Hidden development trait on him. Very good man coverage. He's very fast. Javier Bigby. Really poor man coverage, but good zone, good speed. Alright, well. We need to check out these development traits. One of these guys has to be a superstar. Okay, at least he is. If the other guy's an X-Factor, man, this cornerback class will be one of the best. Kendall Cannon. I was going to sort by overall again but I remembered he went really early he has a star okay well the Chiefs definitely got the better of the two I wish why couldn't that have happened to me last year let's check out a couple of these other these other positions though so Michael Jones looked very good Reggie Sears was the first ranked player or the first overall player to go Mark Preston our guy looks pretty good it drops off really badly though from 77 to 74 there's no 76 or 75 overalls in this draft class interesting interesting all right well this probably would have been the quarterback I would have chosen, either him or Lockhart. They both look pretty good, to be honest. But we're going to stick it out with our guy. I have faith in him. I think he can he can put in work this next year. Okay, the team is at an 82 overall, 85 offense, 85 defense. Well, let's check out what the roster looks like. Honestly, this team is solid. I think this team is very solid. And you can very obviously see that. Just looking at the offense here, there really is not a bad part of this offense. Wide receiver core is actually, okay, I, I could probably sign another wide receiver. Let me go and do that in free agency. But other than that, the quarterback is good. The running back is still good. The offensive line is phenomenal. And TJ Hawkinson is still a good tight end. So let me just sign a free agent wide receiver just before I forget. I put in a contract offer for Kenny Stills, and he did not accept. It's not a big deal, but I'll get Emmanuel Sanders. Yeah, I'll do that for one year. I should be able to sign somebody else then pretty easily. It's not that big of a deal. Okay, so then also, let's check out the rest of this offense. That actually makes it go up to an 87. I meant to say, let's check out the rest of this team. But Hurd is definitely going to be the number two. Okay, cool. Now, on defense, we have Zach Cunningham starting at middle linebacker. Gerard Davis slid to right outside linebacker. Jelani Tavai left outside linebacker. Keanu Neal at strong safety. Mark Preston, I think, is going to be here the free safety. I'm excited to see what he brings to the table. The defensive line is very good. You know, Ferris is up to an 83. All of these guys are talented. Darius Slay, Murphy, Amani Orarie, the corners again. This team has a ton of potential. I think they can make it into the playoffs. I will see you at the midseason, though, to bring back some players. And let me also mess around with specialists. I didn't do that just yet, so I'll do that, and then I will simulate. The team this year is 4-3. and three. All right, so we're actually doing all right so far at the midseason mark. 3-4 and four there for the Steelers. We are tied with the Packers there. 4-4 four and four for the Bears, 3-4, you know, for the Vikings. Now, let's check out the development trait of this free safety. He's the one I'm most excited about. Offensively, though, we have a couple experience points going around. Always good to see. This guy has star. Man, this is not been a good rebuild for me drafting i've only drafted stars so far but who knows maybe their development can go up or something after this season damon harrison is the top free agent he's still on 94 i want him back on the team deshaun hand is a guy i want carry on johnson is a guy i want frank ragnow i would like these other guys i'm gonna let go I don't really think they're that important right now. Okay, this year seemed to have went pretty well. We got a first round bye. We finished 10-5-1, 9-6-1 for the Packers, 7-9 for the Vikings, 5-11 for the Bears. We actually finished super well then. What, we were 4-3 at the midseason, so only dropped two games after that and tied once. Let's just check out that second half of the season. We went on a tear. Yeah, we won two games in a row, tied, won the final four. We didn't lose a game... What, in the final seven, but we did tie. 42-42, to 42. what a game to tie. All right, well, how did this quarterback do this season? Okay, over 4,000 yards, 35 touchdowns, 9 picks. Maybe the Patriots playbook is the way to go. 
Carry on Johnson was also very good. 11 rushing touchdowns, 4.4 yards per carry, 1,157 yards. Kenny Galladay was phenomenal here once again, over 1,000 yards, almost 1,100 with 12 touchdowns. TJ Hawkinson was pretty good. Kirkland Hurd got 8 touchdowns. Emmanuel Sanders, not horrible, I guess. Still a lot of sacks for Taylor Decker. I guess he's not too good in simulation. 116 tackles for the newly acquired Zach Cunningham, 107 for Tobias Murphy, 14 tackles for loss for Damon Harrison, 12 for Trey Flowers, 10.5 sacks for Trey Flowers, 10 for Damon Harrison, 9 for Kirkland Ferris. This team plays pretty well in a 4-3, I gotta, gotta admit that. 3 interceptions for Darius Slay, 2 for Monty Orarie, 1 for Gerard Davis, and 1 for Tobias Murphy. Defensive touchdowns, we have a handful, we have 2, Darius Slay and Tobias Murphy. 0 safeties. We have two blocked kicks, Damon Harrison, Austin Bryant. And we have two forced fumbles, Zach Cunningham gets, uh, actually he gets two, Gerard Davis gets one, is what I meant to say. Ninth this year on offense, let's go. Defense, I feel like has to be top 10 as well. 21st, not even close. All right, Marcus Mariota though wins MVP. James Walter at number five, I will take that. Mitchell Trubisky makes his way onto the beats. Interesting. And if Seahawks Offensive Player of the Year is going to James Walter. Okay. I will take that. Defensive Player of the Year, Roquan Smith. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Nolan Hart. Defensive Rookie of the Year, Michael Jones wins it. Our safety at number 7. Dean Farrell at number 8. Okay. So, this quarterback, I imagine, has a good number of experience points. I feel like he may even go up in dev after this season. Which would be quite awesome. He has 4. That's awesome. We're going to spend that, obviously, before we get into the game. And then defensively, Jelani Tavai has two more. The safety also has four. Okay, I will take it. Let's spend these and see who we have to take on. We have to go up against the Panthers here in the divisional round, but actually, before I get into that, let me spend my coach experience, because I think I have enough here. Yeah, let's get the wide receiver boost. Why not? Could have gotten the offensive line one before. Not that big of a deal, though. We are an 86 overall now. The Panthers are an 83 overall. They have two more X-Factors than we do. At least two more. Obviously, it's only there's only three displayed there. Let's advance. Can we win? This would be huge. If we can get a win, we actually can. 16-10 to 10 to go up against the Falcons. Another team from that same division. There are 74. Dude, I miss out on the playoffs with teams like... Last year with this team, what were they, like a 78 or something? I miss out on the playoffs with teams in the 80s. I don't understand this game sometimes. But let's go to the Super Bowl. Can we make it to the Super Bowl with this Lions squad? We cannot. The Falcons and the Bills. What an interesting Super Bowl. The winner of it, though, is going to be the Falcons. A 70, what, 4 overall team, is that what I just said, wins the Super Bowl? Because, you know, why not? Alright. Anybody go up in development. I'm actually really surprised the quarterback did it. Kenny Galladay did, though. He's up to superstar. That's always cool to see. Defensively, Tavai is an X-Factor. Didn't expect that one. All right. Dude, he's a beast, man. He started this off as a 73 with normal, and he's an 85 with X-Factor at this point. My god, a run stuffer is his X-Factor ability? Dude, he's a glitch. He's very, very good to have in this game. It seems like, you know, rookie linebackers are still super overpowered. So, who is here who we have to bring back? Uh, we don't have any money, though, so we can't even bring back anybody if I wanted to. Tracy Walker, Quandre Diggs, Sam Martin. Okay, I'm not going to worry about it. We should be able to sign all of those positions relatively easily. But can we even can we even sign anybody in general, though? We can't. All right, it's always good to see who's here, though. Leighton Van Der Esch is always there. J.J. Watt, Von Miller, Teron Armstead. Uh, there's a lot of really good players. Tyron Matthew is a player who's here. Will Disley is actually pretty good in this game. He played well for me in my uh, Seahawks rebuild. But let's just go to the draft, and let's just select some random players, because I really don't think I need anything. We pick at 29th. Of course we do, because we made the playoffs somewhat pretty deep. So, my god, there's a lot of really good players in this class. Okay, just looking at the combine grades and top three skills and whatnot, both of those guys look nutty. Robbie Sloan looks really good. Bobby Joseph also looks really good. Oh my god, he's going to be almost an 80, I imagine. This tight end looks nice. 6.9 combine grade for him. Another tight end, 7. 459 speed. That dude's a wide receiver. Jesus, man. 443 speed for that guy. Yeah, this draft class is nutty. Jeez, Trayvon Lloyd looks disgusting. He's probably the highest player in the class, if I do imagine. I really don't need anything in particular. I don't really want to bother trading up. I'm just going to sim it to pick number 29. Of course, I'll highlight the players in the draft, though. I imagine that, that tight end, not the tight end, that 
guard is probably the best. I think his last name is Lloyd or something like that. And of course, nobody here is really left for us. Didn't really imagine it would be that way, though. I could go with a backup running back. I could actually use one. This wide receiver also looks pretty good. I'm going to go with this running back, though. Bernard Bowers. Welcome to the team here. 74 overall. Hidden development trait. Actually, it looks very good. 93 speed. 92 acceleration. 93 agility. All right. He's a good backup for Carry On Johnson. Oh, I feel like I have to. I feel like I have to go with William Farr. Right? He skipped the combine. It, it just has to be done. That's actually not even that bad. A 68 overall. Pretty poor blocking stats all around. Decent run block power and lead block, I guess, but 85 strength. You know, that's actually, that's actually pretty good. There's also another good looking right tackle in terms of combine. So I'll probably end up going with that guy with this pick if he's still available. May as well check. If he's not, then I'll just pick someone random here. Let's see, is this right tackle available? I went the wrong direction. And he still is. Jason Cumberland is the guy I was looking at. His combine is nutty. And he's a 69. Okay, that guy's really good. Another player who can't really block, but good lead block, good strength, pretty fast. Okay. I mean, that's not a bad draft pick. This is definitely a draft class I need to look at because a couple of those top guys looked unbelievably good. Alright, so, who is the top player in this class? I imagine it might have an 80. No, it has 379s, though. Trayvon Lloyd was one of them. I thought this guy was going to be something insane. My god, he can't run block for anything, though. Good lord. Is that the same guy I thought of before? I think it might be. Well, he can't run block for anything. Will Long looks pretty good at defensive tackle. Very strong, pretty fast, 74 speed. Not bad. Devin Palumbo, 79 overall normal development, 92 strength for him. Leslie Keaton is a nice looking wide receiver, 78 overall, 92 speed, 97 agility. Okay. This was a really good draft class. This Lions team heading into this final season. 82 overall, 89 offense, 87 defense. I could technically use a wide receiver, I guess, as the number three. I might simulate and see if anybody gets cut because right now there are like no good wide receivers. The best one is Ray Ray Armstrong. No, Ray Ray McLeod. Ray Ray Armstrong is a linebacker, isn't he? Defensively, it gets a lot better on the side of the ball, in my opinion. We have two X factors over here, Tavai and Harrison. Keanu Neal is still on this team, 91 overall. A lot of really solid players, still fairly young as well. Aside from Harrison, of course. It actually says the offense is better than the defense, but I think I'd rank the uh, defense a little bit better. I will simulate now, and I'll see you at the end of the season. Ah, this is the perfect end to a rebuild. We almost make it to the Super Bowl the year before, and we don't even make the playoffs this year. Seven and nine. Gotta love that. The quarterback, over 4,000 yards again, but 23 touchdowns to 19 picks. Oh my god. What happened? How'd you play so badly, man? Carry on Johnson was, like, dominant. 1,239 yards, 5 per carry, 13 touchdowns. He carried this offense 100%. Kirkland Hurd played well. Kenny Galladay was also pretty good. TJ Hawkinson, 900 yards. What happened to the quarterback, man? The offense seemed great aside from him. We have 128 tackles from Zach Cunningham. Jelani Tavai got 13 for a loss, 15 for Kirkland Ferris, 10 sacks for Deshaun Hand, 8 for Trey Flowers. This defensive line and defense in general is still playing well. 4 interceptions for Keanu Neal, 3 for Tobias Murphy, 2 for Justin Coleman, 1 for Jelani, hold on, Jelani Tavai. I almost said Jelani Talai. Wow. Okay, and Zach Cunningham, <laughs> that would have been a very strange spoonerism. If you guys don't know what that means, you can look it up if you want. One defensive touchdown, nope. What did I see that I said one? Clearly a zero. Safeties, one. There we go. Damon Harrison gets it. Blocked kicks, one. Kirkland Ferris. Maybe I just predicted the other two. I don't know. Two forced fumbles for Keanu Neal, one for Tobias Murphy. Let me relax. Let me calm down. Get my blood pressure back chilling. 14th on offense, 10th on defense, and the team goes 7-9. and nine. Gotta love it. I think that's the best average ranking we got for both of those as well, but whatever. Nobody from the Lions. Dak Prescott, though, is on the Broncos. NFC Offensive Player of the Year, Ezekiel Elliott. Defensive Player of the Year, Roquan Smith. Jelani Tavai, number 10. I'll take it. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Robbie Sloan. Defensive Rookie of the Year, Anthony German, or Germain, whatever, however you want to pronounce that. Best Quarterback, Matt Ryan. Best Running Back, Ezekiel Elliott. Carry on Johnson at number 4, though. Best Wide Receiver, Michael Thomas. Kenny Galladay at number 6. Best offensive lineman, David Bakhtiari, Zach Martin at number two, 
And somebody else from our team. Hold on, who was that? It was Ali Marpit. Best defensive lineman, Aaron Donald wins that one, of course. Trey Flowers, though, at number 9. Best linebacker, Roquan Smith. Jelani Tavai at number 7. Best defensive back, Carlton Davis. Keanu Neal at number 2. Tobias Murphy at number 7. Best kicker, Graham Gundo. And then nobody from our team. But that is going to conclude this one. Honestly, I didn't think it actually turned out that badly, but I guess the game didn't really agree with me. I thought I did pretty well with this team. Not the best drafting from me. Like, we drafted some great players. We drafted some good overalls and whatnot. But we didn't get any, like, crazy developments. Also, the Browns and the Packers in Super Bowl 57, if anyone cares. But you Lions fans, don't fret, because I will come back to this team realistically at some point. Hopefully do a lot better. But let's check out these developments for one last time, in case anybody went up. Imagine the quarterback goes up this year. I would have been livid if that was the year he went up, because he definitely did not deserve it. This guy has superstar, by the way. Our backup running back, Bernard Bowers. Oh, this guy would be awesome to have in a franchise. Superstar dev with that kind of speed. He's insane. And then defensively, don't think anybody else was promoted in terms of de development trait, but a couple more experience points going around, all that good stuff. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you ended up enjoying, feel free to leave a like down below. It would be awesome. It would definitely help me out in the end. Also, leave some comments. Let me know what you guys think of these rebuilds so far. Let me know what team I should do next and all that good stuff. And one final time, thanks so much for watching, and I'll talk to you guys soon.